So I'm back working on the Slough Creek map, which is always a pleasure. And uh, obviously there is one big waterway, the creek itself, Slough Creek, cut, cutting through the entire map. There's also this lake, McBride Lake. Um, and if you didn't know about that, then be sure to check out our return hike to Slough Creek, the real Slough Creek video. But those aren't the only ones. There are a number of these small tributaries really small creeks that flow down from the highlands. And so if we get a nice uh, bird's eye view up here, we, there's a little pond up here. And so we need to have a creek running from this pond down to McBride. So what I want to do is make this creek. And actually, I thought I already did, sort of, because we use satellite images for all the ground cover here. And this lower part of the creek, you can, you can see it in the satellite image with that sandy bank. The upper part of it, you can't see the creek because of all the trees. But I had made a best guess using the vegetation, the density of the trees, to paint here this gravel path, basically, where, where I thought the creek must flow. So I was about to start carving the creek bed, but I thought, well, I better just double check that this really is the downhill path. Because water looks funny when it flows uphill. So using one of our tools called River Auto Material has this nice simulation feature that will find the um, downhill route from any point, I could see that the actual downhill route is not exactly the same as what I had painted on based on the satellite images. Why is that? We're using topographic data, which is accurate overall, but doesn't have the same level of precision as the real world does. It's every 10 meters or something like that. So, so between these fine-grained variations, in the uh, terrain on the ground and you know mistakes I made when I was painting it based on the vegetation density doesn't quite match but fortunately we have this tool that will find the downhill route and can use that to determine the path of this creek so using that switch to a higher level of sampling more frequently sampling the terrain elevation down the course of the hillside here and and generate our creek path that's the surface of the creek, but uh, the next step is to dig the creek bed itself. And so this uh, tool has a nice feature that will do that. And this is actually the visualization step that shows you in green here what shape it is. I'm adjusting some curves here to control the shape of the creek bed, making it um, deeper, steeper walls, more angled walls, whatever I want. For our creek, I want a flat bottom and pretty steep walls. So something like this, let's try that and generate it, and there it is. It's got nice deep walls. Um, how deep is it? Whoa, that's a little deep. That's our one meter cube. That is a That would be a surprise if you stepped off into that. So, um, gonna take another crack at this. Making the creek much, much shallower. Here we go, generated, and this is much better than my, what I had before. Now the next step, of course, the creek isn't uh, grassy on the floor, it's gravelly, so this tool also will let me select a texture and paint it along the creek bed and walls. So there we go, a nice gravel creek. Looks pretty barren without all the vegetation, so let's turn that back on. Looks better already, but of course creeks create their own um, ecology, really. And so let's do some of that here. First of all, we, we make a mask layer along the creek, because we want to have special stuff along the creek along the sides, actually in the creek itself. So here's this mask that follows the creek from the very start up by that pond down to where it goes into Lake McBride. And so let me assign some grass to that. There we go. Oops, that's actually uh, left over from Amethyst where, the, where all the grass is brown. Of course, it's green. So let's switch that from brown fescue to green fescue. But actually along the creek here, it's, it's a, you know, a lot of water here. So maybe it's more of the the sedge kind of grass that grows down in the um, in the meadows. I think that's probably more realistic, so let's swap that in. Looks like that's actually different scaling factors, so we'll tweak that a little bit to look at, to make it look about the right size. What else do we have along creeks? Well, rocks, of course. So let's add some boulders. They get washed down in the springtime, especially. That's probably more boulders than we want. Let's uh, adjust the density of that. So we want to just get a nice Nice mix of rocks and grass. And now it's time to tweak the water material. This is using the material from the main Slough Creek, but that's much bigger, so the ripples here are very, very tiny. 
So I want to adjust the tiling factor on that and on the foam and some other things here to get it to match the much smaller scale of this creek. So that's looking pretty good. Still some more tweaks to do, but it's getting there. But of course, this being Slough Creek, the question always is, what do the pups think of it? Thank you everyone who submitted ideas for the dispersal packs in Lost River. We had a lot of fun looking those over, narrowing them down. We put them up for a vote earlier this week. And here's the final selection. They're in the current beta build right now out on Steam and will be in the official patch coming in a few days.